I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Alex Ship, CSO of Offshift. Alex, welcome to the show, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm seeing one of the emerging trends uh, in blockchain right now as PriFi, privacy, uh, which I feel like is very needed with these pseudonymous, not really anonymous um, transactions where people can look into your Ethereum or Bitcoin balance. If you've sent them a transaction, they can see everything in your account. Um, and I feel like there's some solutions to be had there. Um, I'm interested to hear uh, what your team is working on in PriFi. So let's just dive straight into it. Uh, I'd love to start with just an overview of, of Offshift and the solutions your team's bringing, and then we'll dive into everything in privacy. Yeah, yeah. So Offshift is pioneering PriFi private decentralized finance, which is really all about bringing privacy to DeFi on Ethereum layer one. Um, I know you're sort of an, an, uh, you know, an OG, so to speak. You've been in the space for a while and uh, the space looked very different in 2016, 2017, where you could hold Bitcoin, you could transfer it. Um, and you could do the same thing on Monero, and there were very few trade-offs to doing so. Uh, now, as we've sort of seen this emergence of decentralized finance, of, of NFTs and insurance protocols and a lot of other things, uh, things have changed a lot, which is where you can't really get privacy in this space. And in order to interact with those things, pursue yield, provide liquidity, et cetera, you, you really have to forego your privacy. Um, and so there are a lot of people that are interested in privacy. They do want to protect themselves for both humanitarian purposes uh, and also for the, you know, as we see the emergence of this uh, sort of data economy for the wealth that's vested in their data, uh, but they aren't willing to forego that access to DeFi. Um, and so uh, there is a really huge sort of unserved demand um, for privacy in DeFi. And again, that means on Ethereum, on layer one in these decentralized environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like m more and more people, as they realize about the not your keys, not your coins, are moving away from centralized exchanges. Um, after they've either been hacked or you know had some kind of issues accessing their coins when they're giving their private keys to somebody else, now moving to DeFi and having full control, but having to learn to use DeFi and and with that sort of try to manage their own data and, and privacy and, and have their funds in order, not scattered around and, and, and sort of controlling that. So how are you guys exactly helping with that, with the people that are using DeFi? Yeah, so I mean, there. But before the, before I actually bring up our, our sort of solutions, I'd like to mention, you said something that really stood out to me about pseudonymity. And it's a lot of people who, who don't really understand that as crypto actually gets adopted, it's designed for transactions. And when you have to pay someone or receive money from someone, you know, as someone who's in the space, as someone who's working at projects and things, you are paying people in cryptocurrency a lot. You have a graphic designer and you have to pay them somehow. And you get into these kinds of situations where if you're doing a lot of transactions, you realize the need for privacy. You're like, do I really want the graphic designer to see the salaries of everyone else on the team? Mm -hmm. If you're paying someone to do something, for a lot of people that are just sort of touching the space or they're just investing on the side as a sort of alternative investment, they're not really aware of five, 10 years, 20 years down the line when there is real adoption. It's totally, it's, it's beyond reasonable to have, um, it just won't really be feasible if you have to constantly get new addresses all the time and figure things out. So I do want to mention that because that's a really good point. Um, as far as privacy, there are really two avenues to privacy. One is the anonymity, which is where the individual is blocked or shielded. And the second is confidentiality. And, and everyone sort of knows the motif where the president gets handed the manila folder and it says confidential in, in red letters. And everyone knows who the president is and everyone knows that he has the information, but they don't know the contents. And that's very important. So there are these two avenues, right? So anonymity, we're working on, we're building out a platform right now, uh, development's going really well. That's called Offshift Anon. And that's where you can take our native token XFT and you can burn that to mint our Anon assets, A-N-O-N, USD, BTC, et cetera. And you become dissociated from your capital in the process. Um, and so you could say that you could draw a lot of parallels to Tornado Cash there, um, although our solution is non-custodial. Um, and in the process, you know, you now own these synthetics and the synthetics are fully public standard ERC-20s, which means there are no barriers to integrations or feature implementation or anything. Um, and so that's really exciting. You know, the, the doors to business development are, are wide open there, so to speak. Um, and so there's a lot of like, you can pursue yields and everything. And again, like it's really just dropping down these barriers and trade-offs to privacy where you can really participate in DeFi. And it's up to us to get integrations and to work on that. Uh, on the other end, we have already developed, you know, a confidential solution. And the confidential solution is the really big challenge and it's a really a major technical milestone for Ethereum layer one, which is where we employ bulletproof ZK proofs to mint the ZK assets, obviously ZK referring to zero knowledge, which are, you know, what these synthetics are pegged to 
in other words, you know, whether it's peg to BTC or USD and also the balance is totally hidden. Um, and so that is, that is, again, a major technical accomplishment to be able to do that on Ethereum layer one. The challenge there, which we can speak more about, is like the related gas and how we're approaching that. Um, but yeah, these two, these, these are two major solutions in Ethereum DeFi and we're sort of tackling them both. Wow, very interesting. And, and what you mentioned there about the balances and, and, the, and, and the gas fees, but I, I've heard of creating uh, like a zero knowledge kind of layer where, I, get, correct me if I'm wrong, but f from people that understand moving Bitcoin into DeFi, you know, in, in the original way you would do it, you would make like a wrapped Bitcoin where you'd have like a W Bitcoin that turns it into an ERC-20 compatible, but still doesn't have the privacy functionality. Is it similar to that, but you're adding in the zero knowledge proofs layer as well? Well, for, for one, though, like that, again, that wrapping process involves some form of a custodial solution, which in, in, in you know, sort of introduces some elements of centralization. Mm -hmm. These are really these these synthetics don't have any sort of wrapping involved. I mean, they are being minted. It's really algorithmic, you know, and, and sort of what's happened with Terra recently has created a lot of fear and uncertainty and concern regarding algorithmic stable coins. But a better way of saying algorithmic is simply decentralized. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, MakerDAO is an absolutely brilliant platform that does something similar right they have a lot of collateral they have their assets but they don't but now they have a little bit of usdc but more so the, the, the die isn't there's not a custodial account of us dollars right um and so when we want to just throw out these algorithms we're throwing out decentralization so we have to be careful there so these these assets are minted and we use chain link oracles um to do it mm. um now when you talk about using a zk layer like employing some kind of a layer two, that also introduces some element of centralization. So there, there are conversations to be had there about that. Um, I, I wrote an op-ed recently in the Define about this, about some of the challenges that we're facing, because, you know, simply put, there's no such thing as a free zero knowledge launch. Um, they're very computationally intensive and Ethereum, we're at a very nascent stage right now. So trying to do all of this really sophisticated cryptography and computation on chain does introduce some challenges. It's, it's kind of like trying to email someone a video, like a 10 minute video in 19 99, right? The application potential is going to be limited by the infrastructure's capabilities. So that's something we're taking into account. We're working on optimizations. We're looking at it. We're doing a lot of things and, and we're, you know, sort of keeping our community up to date there. Definitely. And I think it's still hard to email people large videos with the quality <laughs> that they're getting to now. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and now with, you know, with introducing these non assets, I feel like pe it, it's a for some, it's a bit of a big step to move from centralized exchanges to decentralized. And, um, it, you know, there's a few technical barriers to entry, just understanding how it works, uh, especially if you're going into liquidity provision and stuff, then you really have to understand the risks. Um, how much more of a technical step is it to to take this step with, with Offshift and make it more privacy enabled? Uh, well, we're focused on making that additional step zero next to nothing. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, you do make a good point about the, the novel technical challenges and getting acquainted with sort of the UIUX, but I think Uniswap was really a brilliant platform because they showed just how easy trading can and should be. And we have a similar vision for RUI and UX, which is where you have what you what you start with and what you're shifting into. And it's just those two. It's a very similar UI UX to a standard AMM or automated market maker. Um, and and I think that, in fact, some people are finding that they prefer now DEXs. That's much easier than that crazy screen with all of the, the charting and stuff. For, for a trader, maybe this, the centralized exchange is actually easier. But on the other end, um, certainly uh, DeFi provides some actually simple, more simple user interfaces. But to us, principally, we want to reduce the barriers and the trade-offs associated with privacy and yet yeah, technology you know it shouldn't be for technically savvy people it needs to be i feel like being private today click here to be private that's it mm -hmm. um and so to even make it you know reduce that that balance you know i would say barrier even more you know you don't have to go from xf team to zk assets you could take f and we will leverage Uniswap routers, and so it will trade into XFT, burn, and that all happens under the hood. So you can go from any ERC-20 or FDEF or whatever straight into the Zcash, the non-assets, et cetera, to the synthetic side. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great to hear. And yeah, yeah you're, you're right about, you know, when you mentioned algorithmic, um, I'm just thinking of the recent news, and I'm like, uh-oh, like, you know, uh, yeah, with, yeah. with Luna being algorithmic. But I do know MakerDAO being a decentralized solution um, has had a, a stable standing for quite a long time now. And I do believe that's the future. It's just about doing it right. And, and I'm curious on the the risks uh, associated with um, the 
uh, switching of the assets to a non-assets and if there's a pegging, depegging, um, and, and how that works with your original assets, if it's decentralized, you're holding your original assets and, and, they're, and they're locked while using the anonymous assets, or maybe you can explain that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's really good that you're bringing this up because um, I, I do want to speak to Tara and then uh, I do want to speak to a little bit about, you know, how those tokenomics work. Uh, we have really thorough documentation on our site. You go to offshift.io, you can look at our ecosystem white paper and then the offshift and online paper. So you get like a, a really, you know, good deep dive into tokenomics. Um, and we also have some simplified videos on our on our YouTube channel, Offshift Academy. So um, I think like really the best place to start and, and to speak to is what's going on in the markets right now. Um, obviously, no one likes to see this. We don't root for prices to go down. But during bull markets, it's very difficult because it's very noisy, it's very colorful, and people are leveraging a lot of capital to scream louder than everyone else to get their faces up there to pull in celebrities and do things. And so projects that are doing things right and doing things the real way have, have trouble. Oftentimes, we've, we've had some trouble at times getting noticed. Uh, for following our principles. Now people's attitudes are shifting. When they see everything starting to fall off a cliff, uh, they're starting to say, reflect on some of their investment principles and their approach and saying, what am I really investing in? Am I chasing yields? Am I chasing speculation? I really should be chasing utility. And it's all about utility. Um, I think at the end of the day is how is this, how are we adding value to users? What market demand are we serving? Um, and like Tara, you know, if you read their white paper, and I think a lot of people that invested did not, like you really should read white papers. Um, it's, it's, it's a really good practice. Um, the, first, the first sentence of the last paragraph of their white paper says, if Bitcoin confers immutability and Ethereum confers first expressibility, then Terra offers usability. Um, and I think that's a really sort of, a, they, they're referring to their price stabilization mechanics, but anyone who's in the money game or the currency game where you can send these sort of stable coins over a low cost blockchain like Terra, uh, what they're essentially saying is that, you know, I mean, anyone who wants to have this unit of currency, the global, the, the you know, the payoff is really high if you win. But for, for a unit of currency or a unit of exchange, uh, utility is a function of adoption, meaning that it can't be usable until merchants adopt it, everyone holds it, everyone understands it. And so you have to introduce incentives, you have to subsidize adoption, you have to pay people to use it. And, and that's not, that's, I'm not going to use the P word, the Ponzi word, call names or anything, but it's, it's just the way the nature of the situation. So even for Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a volatile instrument, so people who buy it, they believe that it's going to appreciate. Mm -hmm. As a stable coin, you have to pay out yields because it's not going to appreciate. You have to have some form of seniorage or yields. Mm -hmm. And you know, they it's it's just that's the that the heart of Keynesian economics. Fake it till you make it economics. You need to get that thing used before you run out of capital to pay off those continue paying people. And it's really challenging. You know, so to take a look at where we are relative to that kind of model is that we are on the opposite end because we are providing utility empirically. And that is privacy via anonymity or via confidentiality, which is that we're more like a decentralized, you could say a business operating in this decentralized landscape, which is that we're taking the time to develop and conduct research. And we believe that there is significant demand for on-chain privacy and that that demand will grow exponentially in the decade ahead. And so for us, adoption is a function of utility. So we don't need to subsidize. We're not paying people single asset staking. We're not paying 20% like on Anchor. We're not paying 5%. We're not even paying 1% for you to hold our assets or synthetics. And you know, 74, I think, or 76% of all the UST in circulation was staked in Anchor protocol. So you had a lot of number countries and DGENs pursuing yields, and that creates an unstable situation, mm -hmm. right? So Maker uses over collateralization, but empirically, we're not paying people to use our platform because we believe that what we're offering is of enough value for people to be using the platform and we will allow a market of whatever size to form around our synthetics. Yeah, great point, Alex. And uh, yeah, I think it's more about the utility and usability and not just the return because there is inherent yeah. value in the in, in you know what you're providing already. Yes, that's the vision. Absolutely. Amazing. And now I wanna flip the switch for a second and talk about you know recent events. I know you guys were at um, you know, you've been doing the conference circuit and you've also been talking to some big names and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned there about the celebrities and sort of reevaluating your investment thesis in the bear market and you know it really gets people thinking about how they're investing um, and I think privacy as you mentioned and obviously your team agrees building this solution that it's going to exponentially be more important as we continue to grow. Um, I saw that you recently spoke with Edward Snowden, one of the privacy OGs, um, about privacy yeah. and crypto. I would love to hear, you know, what you took away from that conversation about privacy and crypto. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I really encourage everyone actually to go watch that because especially if you like long form stuff or mid form stuff, it's 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 like 60 minutes of us going deep. And it was titled Down the Rabbit Hole Cryptocurrencies Ever Receiving Promise of Privacy. So, you know, if you've seen him on uh, Joe Rogan, if you've seen him at Ethereal, if you've seen him at various places, he's talking about, you know, sort of data privacy, online privacy, really important stuff. And, and also about like the geopolitical uh, situation, all that stuff. But we were just, let's narrow this in and talk about on-chain privacy. Let's talk about cryptocurrency. Let's talk about ZKs, talk about decentralized systems. What does privacy look like on Ethereum? Um, and so it was, it was really, I think for anyone that's in crypto, it would be the best Edward Snowden interview you could watch. Um, and, and sort of what we narrowed in on and, and like to quote him, you know, he said like, he has said publicly that um, he says Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are failing comprehensively and terribly on the privacy aspect. Uh, and he said that any altcoin that isn't private is failing. This is my position. Mm -hmm. um, and so we talked about that, which is that privacy has sort of been like relegated to a sort of um, subsector, like a niche area of cryptocurrency. And, you know, the term crypto implies encryption, which is like the, the sort of that's the 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 source of online privacy in the first place, that, that privacy should be, as long as this space, as long as cryptocurrency is about individual freedoms and protections, uh, privacy needs to be front and center, it needs to be an integral component of our systems. Uh, and it shouldn't be sort of, uh, you know, examined through the lens of some kind of market sector. It needs to be, unless there's a very particular use case that demands radical, absolute transparency, then uh, like maybe government finances, for instance, or something like this. Um, but, you know, at the individual level, because that was something we also talked about, which is that, you know, the Glenn Greenwald quote that transparency is for people carrying out public power uh, in, you know, carrying out public duties in place of public power, privacy is for everyone else. Hmm. Um, and so we need systems, you know, right now we have an inversion of that model where it's the exact opposite. Um, and so what, what we talked about really was, yeah, how can privacy be a part of, we really need privacy on Ethereum because Ethereum is, seems to be like to me, the home or the hub for most of where this exciting development is going on. Um, and so we need to have privacy solutions there for people within the system. Um, and so it really go into a deep conversation about just how important that is. Um, and then at the end, I asked him, you know, what it takes to really carry out and, and follow your principles into your last breath. And he gives a really good answer about sort of his journey. So I yeah, really encourage everyone to, to, to give it a watch. Wow, incredible and, and great quotes there. And yeah, you're right about you know, government funds, like they're using taxpayer funds, other people's money to, to, to spend and, and not as always transparent as it should be. Um, and, yeah. and, and speaking of privacy coins um, and, and not having you know, balances that are shown, it seems like Monero is actually one of those coins that's not totally crashed like everything else in the market, you know, at least looking at the Monero Bitcoin pair, it's doing relatively well. I'm not sure about the other privacy parts of the sector, but I do really like what you said there, or, or I guess what Stone said about, you know, an altcoin that doesn't have privacy function is is just not good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I think reevaluating um, moving forward a lot, it should be a standard for maybe they can introduce an, an Ethereum standard where there's just more privacy in, in by default to like all coins that are created. Yes. Um, I mean, I think, you know, what, what you're speaking to there, like sort of on Ethereum is like, there is this principle challenge. The, it's a really a technical challenge on the, you know, confidential asset side, which is that Ethereum employs an account based transaction model, which means that the concept of an account exists at the core level at the baseline in the protocol. Whereas in, you know, a, a UTXO model, an unspent transaction output model, most famously employed by Bitcoin, you just have these entries on the ledger, a this wallet address A sent this many coins to wallet address B. And so if you can obscure or shield that information, then all of these other concepts, which are downstream abstractions that are handled by block explorers, by wallet applications, then they all become the accounts, so to speak, are really just abstractions and they're no longer, they're no longer visible. But when you have the account at the, at the protocol layer, you have to do a lot more work and it's a very big technical challenge. Um, and so we've been doing quite a bit. That, that's really why the technical challenge is so great. And it's not surprising that a Monero uses a UTXO model and that a lot of privacy centric solutions say, let's build our own blockchain and establish it with parameters that are conducive to privacy centric applications. Mm -hmm. Coming into this unfriendly Ethereum environment that's designed for programmability, that's designed for Turing completeness, state saving stuff that, you know, DeFi applications need to function well, um, is, is really a tall order. It's a big challenge. Yeah. Definitely. Great insights, Alex. And what is the best way for people to follow along with the updates on, on Offshift and, and on your work? 
Um, you know, I mean, offshift.io, we really have a great web designer and, and a great graphic designer. So I really recommend everyone go straight to the website. You can see all our documentation there, but please do follow us, offshift XFT on Twitter, and you can follow me, uh, Alex Ship XFT on Twitter. Um, those are like really the best things. And, and if you really just want to go find us on YouTube and you just want to learn, we have Offshift Academy. You can just search us up Offshift on YouTube and we have some really simple content that, that you can, you know, digest in bite-sized pieces. Amazing. Thank you so much, Alex. I will leave those links in the description box below for all the viewers as well. All the best on everything, introducing more privacy into Ethereum and just helping the blockchain world. I appreciate your efforts. I'm looking forward to following up in the near future. Thank you. It was a pleasure.